Hey, and welcome back to another video on GSAP's Scroll Trigger plugin. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at GSAP's Timeline feature. We're going to learn about why it's useful and how to use Scroll Trigger in a timeline. So if you're coming from the last video in this series, you can see that I've really stripped down my HTML and my CSS as well, because I kind of wanted to start from scratch with this example. So in my index.html file, all I have is a simple div with a class of box. In my CSS, in the body element, I've simply reset all margins to zero, just to get rid of any default margin stylings that the browser might provide. And for that class of box, I've set a width and a height of 100 pixels and a background color of blue. And so if we come here in the browser now, we can see that simple blue box. Now coming back here into my code editor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the app.js file. And here as well, since the last video, I've really stripped this down. I've just left the first line where we register the scroll trigger plugin. So even before we talk about the usage of scroll trigger in a timeline, let's look at what a timeline does and why it's useful. Let's say that we want to create an animation for this blue box. And what we want to do is we want to have a little bit more of a complex animation. Not just a simple tween where the box, let's say, just does one thing like moves across the screen, but we want to connect rather a series of tweens. So we might think to do it like this. We'd say gsap.2, and then we'd pass in our animation target, which is going to be that div with the class of box. And then as the second argument, we'd pass in an object with the various properties that we want animated. So let's say first we'd want to do a transform X, we'll say 500 pixels, and we want to have that last for a duration of two seconds. And then after that, we could do another gsap.2, Again, we'll target that box. And then let's say at that point, we'd want the box to move down 200 pixels. So we do a transform Y. We'll say we want that to last for a duration of three seconds. And the thing is, since we're doing it this way, we're also gonna have to use a delay property in order to get all these animations to run consecutively. So since the first animation lasted for two seconds, we'd wanna set the delay of the second animation to be two. So this one would start two seconds after the first one. And then let's say we'd add a third animation. So again, gsap.2. Again, we target our box. And we'll say for this one, we'll set X to zero. So the box could move back to the left side of the screen. We can make this a duration of two seconds, let's say. And now again, we're gonna have to use a delay property so that this animation starts at the proper time in the sequence. And because the first one lasted for a duration of two, the second one lasted for a duration of three, well, we'd have to set this third animation to be delayed by five seconds. Now, if we jump back to the browser, we can see how that series of animations works out. Let's refresh the page. You see the box move across 500 pixels, down 200 pixels, and then back to the left side of the screen at zero pixels. So you can see how each of those animations played consecutively one after the other with their proper timings because we set up the durations and the delays to match. But now here's the thing, here's why this can become a big problem. Let's say that at a later time we come back to this animation and we decide that the first one, we wanna increase the duration. So let's say instead of two seconds, we wanted that first animation to last for five seconds. Well now you can see what the problem is. In order for this series of animations to play properly at their correct timings, I would now have to come into each of these following animations and adjust their delay times accordingly. You see, because the second one, for example, is only being delayed by two seconds. So it's going to start while this one is still in motion. Let's actually take a look at that in the browser and see how this messes things up. So now I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and notice how that blue square, before it finishes moving across the x-axis, it already starts moving down the y-axis, which causes a kind of diagonal movement. So I'm going to refresh. And here, you can see it moving diagonally. So in other words, the timing is off. So now that you see what the problem is, let's go ahead and try the timeline approach. So what we're going to do is we're going to comment this stuff out. And instead, we're going to create a timeline. So I'll do gsap.timeline with a pair of parentheses, and I'm gonna store this to a variable, I'll call it TL, 
const tl equals gsap dot timeline. And by the way, we're not incorporating scroll trigger just yet, but we are going to do so in a moment. But first, we're just looking at a basic timeline. So now that we have this timeline, we can use it to attach our various animations to. And we can do it like this. Instead of saying gsap.2, now that we have this timeline, we can say tl.2. And here I'll pass the target that we want to animate, which again is the box. And then my object again with the various properties that I want to be animated. So like before, we'll do some of the same things. We'll say x is going to be 500. And we'll give it a duration. We'll say two seconds. And now because of method chaining, we can simply say dot two again. Again, it's the box that we're animating. And here we'll do our Y property, translate Y, 200 pixels. And we'll give this one a duration of three seconds. Now the thing is that since we're in a timeline, we no longer have to deal with setting delay times ourselves. Each consecutive tween is going to play in the proper place automatically. So we'll do our third one. Again, we can say dot two. Target the box. Here we'll do our X at zero pixels. And we'll give this a duration of two seconds. Now back in the browser, now that we have this timeline, let's make sure that it works. So I'm going to refresh the page. It goes X down Y 200 and back to zero on the X axis. Cool, so it's working. Now, here's the beautiful thing. I can come back into my first animation, and I'm free to change the duration. So like before, I can change this to a duration of five seconds. And now, because we're on a timeline, I don't have to deal with adjusting the delay times of any of these following animations. They'll all play at the proper time. And just for fun, let's change this second one as well. Let's actually shorten the duration. We'll set it to two seconds. And again, we'll give it the old browser test. We'll refresh the page. You see that square moving for a duration now of five seconds. It drops down smoothly across the y-axis and then back to zero on the x-axis. And everything just plays properly in order with the correct durations and delay times. So now that we understand what a timeline does and why it's useful, let's see how we can use scroll trigger in a timeline. Just to clean things up, I'm going to delete this commented out code in my JavaScript file. And because we want to see how this works on scroll, I'm going to add a couple elements in my index.html. So before the box, I'm going to add a div. I'm going to give it a class of panel. I'm also going to copy and paste that div after the box. And I'm just using these divs to create some background panels with a height of 100 VH. And this will give us some scroll height in the browser. Of course, we're going to have to make some style rules for those panel divs in our CSS file. So we'll make a rule for the div with the class of panel. We'll give it a height of 100 VH. And we'll give it a background color of pink. OK, in our JavaScript file, just for now, let's comment out the timeline. And let's take a look at those new HTML elements and the styling we did in the browser. So this is what we have in the browser. We now have that first background panel with this pink color taking up 100 VH. And I did that so that we could have some scrolling going on. There's our blue box, followed by another panel with a height of 100 VH. All right, so now let's put our scroll trigger in our timeline. So coming back now into our JavaScript file, I'll go ahead and uncomment out this code. And what we can do is, in our timeline, we're going to pass in an object, and then in this object, we're going to create that scroll trigger property, like that. And because we want to set various properties for the scroll trigger, we're going to make its value an object. And we're going to say that the trigger is going to be that div with the class of box. We'll set up some markers. We'll sign that to true so that we can see our scroll trigger region. And then let's set some start and end properties. So let's say that we want the start to be the top of the box and 80% down in the viewport. And for the end, we can also make that the top of the box. And let's make that 30% down from the top of the viewport. So now we can come into the browser and we can test that out. 
we see our markers here on the right. We have the scroller start, which starts 80% down from the top of the viewport. Our scroller end, which is 30% down from the top of the viewport. And now watch as I scroll. That sequence of tweens is only going to start when the top of that blue box hits the scroller start. So I'm going to start scrolling. There's our blue box. Timeline animation hasn't started yet. But here we go. It starts. And I can let go of the scroll bar, and you'll see that timeline play out. Now another cool thing that we can do, since we have our scroll trigger in a timeline, right, we can apply that scrub property and set that to true. And actually, if we remember from a previous video, we can actually give that a little bit of a lag. So we'll set it to scrub, but we'll say we want to lag it by one second. So that'll give the scrub a little bit more of a relaxed feel. Now I'm going to save and we'll go back to the browser. And what we should see is that the events in this timeline should work in lockstep with our scroller position. So now back in the browser, I'm going to start scrolling down again. And here now, when the top of the box hits the scroller start, that timeline is going to start. But since it's locked to the scroll bar now, if I move my scroll bar back up, it's going to reverse itself in the timeline. And I can play around with that like this. See? So that's a pretty cool effect. In this video, we learned all about GSAP's timeline. We learned about the problem that it solves and why it's useful. And we also saw how to integrate scroll trigger into a timeline. Of course, there's much more to timelines. And I'll probably do a whole other video all about the different things that you can do with the timeline. But if you enjoyed this video, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and hit that bell notification icon so you can be notified of new videos when they're released. I'll see you next time.